Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thanks for watching again. I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. And today I wanted to do a sequel or a follow up to the video from a few weeks ago talking about uh, do I go with a publisher or do I not go with a publisher? And between um, recording that video and uh, putting that video live for you guys to watch it, I basically had my mind made up. But then I got a lot of comments and feedback and had a discussion and a few talks with some people, uh, also from people from publishers. And um, now I'm still confused and still don't know what the decision is going to be. So today's video is not going to be the follow up to that just yet because um, I'm just still deciding. I haven't decided just yet. Um, I will decide pretty soon. I have to. I must. I should. Um, but I haven't. So, um, mm. so this video we're going to talk about so maybe we can talk about I know what we can talk about. I, I got it. Um, do the intro and um, I, I know what we're going to talk about. No, we're not. No, no, we're not going to talk about this um, or this. This is just because it's cold outside and it's freezing outside. Um, we're gonna do a video. I did it uh, last year in February and I talked about the three main tools of game development. There are a lot more tools I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, today is a good day to talk about all the game tools that I use uh, for 2019 and maybe I can do it next year again. But these are the tools I use to um, my everyday game development. Um, game business, uh, coding, graphics, audio everything project management all these things let's talk about the tools i use so let's start with the main and the most important stuff uh, the programming environment i use for all my games i use intellij um, the java programming language and as a framework or library or whatever it's called uh, libgdx which I use only a tiny portion of, but you can find all these things um, freely on the internet. I will put a link in the description below. I use a tiny bit of libgdx, uh, but I use my own engine and framework on top of that. There's not a day that goes by without me using these tools because, well, that's how I create games. Besides doing all the programming on my games, I also do all the graphics and I take care of the sound effects. Although I don't really make all the sound effects, I bought a lot of different sound effects uh, libraries or packs or whatever you want to call them. There are a few websites where you can buy them. There are a lot of professional sound effects creators that have packs on offer that you can download. So you can download a pack full of explosions or a pack full of uh, gun shouting or voices or anything you can think of there is a library out there with a lot of sound effects in it and you can purchase them uh, the prices range from well very cheap like ten dollars to up to hundreds of dollars depending on the quality so that's how i get to my sound effects but they always need a little bit of cutting and editing and and making sure the volume fits so um to get that right i use the free tool called audacity basically i'm not very good at sound and sound effects and stuff so uh, this is the best tool i can get along with it i don't know if there are many other tools around or i don't know if there are better tools around but this has worked for so many years for me and for the things i do to all these sound effects audacity pretty much does everything so i know where all the buttons are and that's the main reason i use certain software and of course there's not just sound effects in my games but also a lot of graphics and for graphics i use gimp and have been using gimp for many years mostly because um, it's free it runs on windows mac or linux so if you ever need to switch to another operating system GIMP will still be there and it works the same on all systems. So that's really uh, the main reason I started using it. But now I'm just very comfortable with it and I just know how everything works and where everything is. And of course, every art program has like a thousand features or maybe even more. And most of us only use like 10 features. And uh, as long as the paint program has those 10 features, it's good enough. So GIMP is really for me uh, the best one. And of course I don't just use it for the in-game graphics, but also for any marketing images I need to create or banners or screenshots or editing stuff. And it's, it's a really good general program that does a lot of things that I don't even use. 
And besides that, I use um, ScreenFlow for recording uh, gameplay videos because if I make trailers or little marketing uh, GIFs or animations or videos or whatever, I need to record my screen. And since I use a Mac, uh, there's not a lot of tools that really worked perfectly. Uh, eventually I found ScreenFlow, which is capable of recording the screen without any uh, slowdown or other problems. So that's what I use to record all the gameplay stuff. And then I use uh, DaVinci Resolve for editing videos, not just the trailers and the game videos, but also these weekly videos. It's pretty much like Premiere, except that this one is a lot cheaper. It's free if you only need the basic functions. And if you want to more have more functions like special effects and things like that, you'll need to pay for, I think two or $300, which is still uh, very cheap compared to Premiere Pro or whatever other tools there are out there. I looked into a lot of video editing software when I started doing these weekly videos. Uh, da Vinci is just, um, it, it works perfectly. It's very fast. Editing videos is a lot easier and doing my trailers for my games is also pretty much uh, very easy to do with this tool. So ScreenFlow and Da Vinci are my two uh, video creation tools because besides doing the game development, I need to do a lot of trailers, uh, features, gameplay teasers, um, these weekly videos, a lot of extra stuff besides doing game creation. But let's get serious because this is also a business. Yes, that's right. Orange Pixel is my business. So I have a bunch of business tools as well for project management, like uh, keeping track of bugs, uh, the things I want to add or uh, need to do and things like that. And just for every project, I use Trello, which is an online service. Um, it's very easy to just make lists and then drag stuff to um, other lists if you completed them or if you don't want to do them anymore. So a lot of items from my to-do list often go into archive or trash cans or vanish. Anyway, Trello is pretty great in uh, keeping track of all the bugs and the to-dos and the problems and the features and the ideas and the concepts and the release list of what's new and um, things like that is uh, pretty much Trello. And of course, then I need to manage all my source code and have backups of my source code. So besides having a bunch of hard disks that I use for backups, I also use Bitbucket, which integrates pretty easy with my development environment. So I can just push a button and all the changes I made to the source code will be uploaded and safe in the cloud. So if my PC ever crashes or something happens, I can always get my source code, at least since the last time I pushed that button, which sometimes is um, not often enough, but usually once a week at the end of the week, I usually commit all my changes and then I have a backup of my source code. And that brings us to the hardware. I'm a Mac user. I never was a Mac user, but since 2011, when I started getting serious about iPhone development, you need to have a Mac to do iPhone development. So ever since then, I've been using a Mac. If I ever stop doing iPhone games, I probably move back to a Windows device because they're just a lot cheaper. These things are expensive. That's Anyway, um, for game testing and gamepad testing, I use um, an Xbox controller. 360. Uh, this is the, one of the few that actually works on a Mac, although the PlayStation 4 controller also works. So I use one, mostly this one and sometimes the PlayStation 4 controller to see if my game works with a gamepad. Uh, for testing on Android tablets, or at least on Android big screen devices, I use the Shield tablet. Thanks Nvidia. Um, and for iPhone testing, I use a iPad. I have no idea which version. Uh, I don't keep track of iDevices or anything because uh, if this one breaks, I buy a new one, not the high end range, but somewhere in the mid range, just to make sure my games run on it. And so far, this is the only device I need for testing my iPhone games. And for Android games, I use this tablet sometimes just to see if how it looks in big screen and my phone, which since last year is the Nokia 7 Plus, um, still a great device, although the power thing is it's getting a little bit that it's not always powering and I'm not sure, but I've seen a lot of complaints about it online, but so far it's still working. And that leaves us with one more gadget that I use a lot, but it's not up here. So um, let's get that. Because I also use the Nvidia Shield TV. Let me show you. which is pretty much always hooked up to our television because, well, it's a game device. It has YouTube on it, Netflix. Everything that we use is all on this NVIDIA Shield. So besides using it for testing, I just do a lot of other stuff with it. So um, that's why it's always hooked up and 
possibly one of my most important gadgets. And that really concludes it. All the hardware, all the software that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to create my games. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you next week. Unless you got anything to add. You in the back. No? Alright, see you next week. Bye.